Hi, I'm Steve. Welcome back to the Maker's Cave. And today, this is going to be part two of our three-part series on the Anycubic Cobra Max 3D printer. And in this video, we're going to go over how to fine tune it. The steps that I'm showing you for fine tuning, they can be applied to other 3D printers too. I ended up discovering this uh, and did it with the other two uh, 3D printers that I have out there. Um, and there's a program out there called Pronterface. It uses the USB cable, hook up to your 3D printer, and there's some adjustments you can, you can make. There's tons of adjustments you can really fine tune a 3D printer with. I'm not going to get into the weeds with that. But the um, two important, uh, at least I think they're important, fine tuning things that you can do on this is one is what's called the PID fine tuning. And what that does is that adjusts the heat in both the nozzle and the bed. Uh, on a 3D printer, the, the heating of the nozzle and the bed isn't like your oven at home where it reaches a temperature and it cools down and then it comes back up to bring it back up to that temperature. That's called like a bang bang kind of heating. Um, what the, the printers do is they actually use an algorithm. So the heat is a nice constant, which is very important when you're printing. And there's three variables, uh, the P, the I, and the D. Don't ask me what they stand for. Uh, but all three of those work together uh, to make sure you had that nice, constant, even temperature in both the head, and, or hot end, and, and the bed. And Pronterface allows you to interface with this to actually change them in the firmware. Uh, it does some tests and uh, figures out what those values should be, and you can set those. Uh, it's, I think I I found an immediate difference in my prints the minute I did that. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually and the uh, second step is E steps. Uh, that's the second step in the fine tuning. What that does is um, if you ask the printer to, uh, to output or extrude a hundred millimeters of filament, it should extrude 100 millimeters of filament. I have found on both the Viper and my Ender 3 that those settings were off just a tiny bit. And you want to talk about a difference in printing. When I fine-tuned my E-steps, I had a, a really different look in my 3D prints. The, some of the layer lines went away, stringing went away. Uh, so I'm, the set, after we get done adjusting the heat, we're going to I'm going to tell you how to adjust these E-steps. And they're really simple using this free software called uh, Pronterface. Uh, let me go ahead and show you this. Go! I have filmed this particular segment of the video three times. This will be the, the third one. Uh, and let me tell you why. I wanted to get everything prepared and I wanted to do some tests before I recorded for you to make sure everything would work right. And I had the right information for you. And every time I ran the, the commands to auto-tune the bed and the nozzle temperature, uh, the results came back, but I went to, you know, to save them automatically, the printer would lock up. And the only way to free it up would be to turn it off and turn it back on. I did this, you know, three, four times and always got the same results. So I finally said, whoa, before, you know, I, I jumped to conclusion, let's just reach out to any cubic. I also reached out to some of the boards on Facebook for Anycubic, but I didn't get any response from them. But Anycubic, you know, they got back to me within 24 hours, which has always been my experience with them. I, I rather like their customer service. They're, they, even though they're across seas, within 24 hours, they, they get back to me. Uh, so I told them what my problem was, and it was a very simple resolution. Uh, their particular firmware that they have in this printer allows for the commands to auto-tune but it doesn't allow for the automatic save. So the workaround is fairly simple. You run the command to get the uh, PID figures for the auto-tune or for the heat bed and the nozzle. Uh, you write those numbers down, then you turn the machine off, you turn the machine back on, and then you use the command to manually save them to the firmware. And poof, it works like magic. No problem whatsoever. So as we move forward, I'm going to show you exactly how we did all that. It's really simple and it's no problem. Uh, we haven't done the complete test yet, but if that's the only hiccup in a machine this big with these kinds of features, that's something we can really all live with. So let's continue on. And what you want to do is you want to go to pronterface.com. This is the home page right here. And you can scroll down here and where it says download, but right here it says latest release. So you just click on that. And then come all the way down to the bottom of this page here. And here's all the different releases for whatever your 
you're working with a Mac, uh, Windows 64 bit, uh, 32 bit, of course, almost all machines nowadays are 64 bit. So that's what I chose here, 64 bit. And it's going to ask me to download it. And it's going to be a zip file and you save it to your downloads file or some other file, file folder. So it comes in a zip file, like I said, and you just, you know, unzip that particular exe file to wherever you want in your down, keep it in your downloads, create a, a folder somewhere else in here. But I put a shortcut on my desktop right here. So I've showed you how to install Pronterface or went over it real quickly on how to get the program and save it to the computer. Uh, the next step is we have to take the USB cable that came with the cutter, or with the cutter, with the printer, and we have to plug it in. So uh, the USB cable goes you right here in the front. So now all we'll do is we'll just take this and put it in here. Now we'll turn the printer on. So the only thing you really have to do here is when you turn this on, it's going to pick a, a particular COM port or serial port uh, for the USB. So I'm going to show you real quick how you can figure that out because some people actually don't know how to do that. So let's take a look at the computer screen here. And what you'll see now is here, if this is your desktop, just, you know, I'm working with Windows 10, Windows 11 is the same. You come down here, you want to right click on the little Windows button here and you want to pick device manager. And what this window does, this, this window shows you all the different things that are going on with your computer and attached to it. And if you come down here to the one called ports and you simply expand that, you're going to see a port right here that says USB serial CH340. That is the, that is the printer. And as you can see, it's on sitting on COM5. Now we'll start up uh, Pronterface. So here's Pronterface um, in the upper right, I'm sorry, in the upper left of the box are pretty much all the ways you can control your 3D printer. And over to the right and at the bottom there is a command box right down here. And this is where you can put in all the commands I'm about to show you. Uh, there's only a couple, so don't worry about it. The first thing we want to do is we want to connect Pronterface to your 3D printer. So remember that we used the device manager to find out what COM port it was on, and it was on COM port 5. Uh, when Pronterface started, it automatically picked COM port 5, probably because it's the only one in the list. So the drop down is just COM 5. We're good there. And now we're going to go over and we're just going to click connect. And now we are connected to the 3D printer, and you can tell that one by over in the right in the result box here, it says printer is now online right there. And also the uh, control panel here over to the left is all lit up in different colors. Now one of the commands is M503 and I'm going to put that down here, M503. And what it basically does, it lists all the different parameters of your 3D printer. So we're going to come down through here and we are going to look for the M301. Um, and these are the current values of the P, the I, and the D, okay? So now what we're going to do is we're going to tell this thing to go out and fine-tune the heating algorithms of the, uh, of the print head or the uh, hot end. Now, before we run the auto-tune command, what we need to do is we need to turn the fan on high because that's most likely how you would print is with the fan running at full speed. So you come down here to the command box, you type in M106, then you hit space, and then you do S255. Uh, 255 is the high speed, is the 100% fan speed. So then we come over here and we hit send, and I don't know if you can hear through my mic, but the fan has now spun up, it's spinning at full speed. So now what we're going to do is we're going to send the command to auto-tune this. So you come back in, down here to the uh, command box, and in the command box you would type M303, which is the auto-tune command for uh, the heat bed in the nozzle. You're going to type E0, that E0 means that's the nozzle, and then you hit space. Then you do C, and C stands for how many times do you want it to go through the heating and cooling process to get those fine-tuned numbers, and I'm going to do 10. So we'll do C10. Then it's going to do the command of uh, S. 
Okay, so S is stands for what is the temperature you want it to use as the basis for this test. I'm going to do 250 because that's the temperature I print at most often with the PEG or PETG. Uh, if you do PLA, you may want to do 200. It's whatever temperature you would most likely do most of your printing at. So I'm going to use 250, and that is it. So now what we do is we come over to here, and we click Send. And as you can see in the command box, PID Auto-Tune has started. So now what we'll do is we'll just wait for the whole process to get done, and we'll can pick it up from there. Okay, the auto-tune is all done. Here are the results right here that came back. So right now, you ought to take my word for it, but the printer is locked up. You're not going to be able to send any more commands. So what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to write these uh, numbers down uh, where it says default KP 20.32, KI 1.56, and the KD at 66.22. Uh, so you want to write those numbers down. Then we're going to come over here. We're going to turn the printer off. And then we're going to turn it back on. We'll come back over here to prompt or face. And all you do is just simply, uh, you're going to have to choose disconnect. And then you're going to choose connect again. And as you can see down here, the printer is now online. So now those numbers you just wrote down, we're going to manually put them into the firmware. So the printer has those. So here's, here's what you do. You type M301. This command tells um, Pronterface to go and save those commands out into the firmware. It's the manual save command. And then you put in P and whatever your P number was, which was 20.32. Then you do a space. Then you do I. And you take that I number that you had, which was 1. 56, 1.56, then you type D, and what was that D number? That was 66.22. Okay, so that's simple. That's all the command is, M301, your P number, your I number, excuse me, and your D number. And you come over here and you click Send. And you can see the command went through because it echoes back what the command was right here very last line if I can highlight it okay now that we did the M303 command to save our settings uh, in to, to memory but not to the firmware this is the next important step you want to type in M500 and what that does is the settings are stored as you can see right here so after you put in the PID figures with the M303 command, you hit M500 to save. Now that we did the nozzle, it's time to do the heat bed. So it's basically almost the same exact thing all over again. You're going to use the M303 command. So you're going to come down here into the command box. You're going to type M303 space E-1. And that stands for the bed. And then you want to type in the C, which is how many cycles again. Now, the bed doesn't have to be as fine-tuned as the nozzle. So I find that three cycles is pretty good. If you want to do five, you can do that. But I find three cycles pretty good. And then you're going to do your S command again. And again, with the pet G that I use, I have the bed set at 80 degrees most of the time. So that's why I'm going to do S80. I'm going to do, and that is it for that command. All we got to do is you got to choose the bed, how many cycles, and the temperature you want it to use as the base figure. And we are going to push send. And just like before, PID Auto Tune has started. So now it's going to go out there and it's going to fine tune those figures for the bed. And we'll come back in a second and we'll see what those results are. Oh, and if you want to see the progress, you know, there's a little chart right over here, this little graph. And as you can see, the bed temperature is slowly coming up. So you can see how many see it as the bed temperature goes up, comes back down, goes back up, and cycles through those three times. So the auto-tune for the PID settings for the bed have completed. Here they are right here. The P, the I, and the D. 
So you want to write those figures down again. So you're going to have to take my word for it. That the printer is locked up, so we're going to turn it off again. Wait a couple seconds. Turn it back on. Come over here and like before, we're going to hit disconnect up here in the upper left. Then we're going to click connect again. And now the printer is online. Now we need to save those PID settings for the bed into the firmware. So we do that using an M304 command. So we come down here to the command box. We type M304 P227.45 our I, which is 23.35, D, 1474.76, and we click Send, and you see it echoes back that it saves it. Now, just like the nozzle, we have to type an M500 to make sure we save it to the firmware, so we type M 500 send and it says settings stored so now you've fine-tuned the heat uh, algorithms for the bed and the nozzle next I'm going to show you e-steps e-steps that is basically how much filament the machine puts out it has an algorithm based on how many you know, the gearing, everything else, it's like one command puts out so many, you know, length of, uh, of filament. I consider this setting more important than even the heat bed and the nozzle temperature settings. Because um, although I saw a difference when I adjusted the heat in some of my prints, I can't tell you the remarkable amount of um, detail I started to get out of my prints by doing the E-steps. Because basically what happens, this is all set at the factory, so you can have all kinds of variances from... The, the stepper motor to the exact uh, machining of the gears. There's a whole lot of variables in there. So sometimes the E-steps can be, can be off. So if you tell this to put out uh, 100 millimeters worth of filament, uh, it may put out a little bit more or a little bit less than 100 millimeters. So this exact fine tune is going to get this dead on. Okay, so let's go and see how we do this. So for this test, we have to get some filament to run through the, uh, the print head. So the print head has to be warmed up. And the way you do that is you go to the main menu and you choose prepare. You're going to do preheat. You're going to do preheat ABS. All right. And that is going to bring the nozzle temperature up to 240 degrees. As you recall, it came with a test spool of uh, PLA filament uh, right here. So we're going to load that filament into the machine. So while the bed is coming to temperature, let's put our filament in. Here is our test filament right here. It gets fed in right through here. This is the runout sensor. So if your filament runs out while you're printing, the printer stops so you can put more in. You're going to bring it through here. You're going to put it through this tube right here. Now one nice thing about the Viper and the Cobra Max uh, and I'm sh I think a couple of their other printers, is there's an auto load feature for the filament. So now that the, the nozzle is preheated and we have our filament loaded in, you're gonna back up one screen, hit the return button here, and you're gonna do prepare, and then you're gonna do um, filament. You're gonna do filament in. You're just gonna do a gentle push. And now, as you can, I don't know if you can see now, but the uh, motors are going, the stepper motor is going, it's feeding in this filament and it's going to start oozing out of the print head pretty soon. All right, so when's it? Okay, as you can see, here comes the filament oozing out of the print head. So now we know the filament is loaded. So what we're going to do is we're going to come back to the screen here. I'm going to push stop. That's going to stop that filament from going in there. So right here is that tube where it's going in. And I've got myself a metric uh, ruler here. And we want to measure out 100 millimeters from the very end of this tube. It's going to be a little hard for you guys to see. Okay, so I made that mark. Okay, so here's over, over here in, in this way. 
There's the end of the tube. I measured out 100 millimeters and I put a little black mark with a Sharpie on there. You can use a pen, pencil, whatever you want to do. So what's going to happen is this filament is going to feed out and we're going to see how close, you know, advanced or positive, all right, this black mark is. So we come back to Pronter face and we are going to want to make sure that we are connected. Okay, so one way to do that is we'll just issue an M503 command. And we got a response back, so we know we're connected to the printer. So now we're going to come over to here, and where it says up here, heat, we're actually going to set that at 230 degrees. It's a drop down. And down here, that's going to, but that's 230s. That means Pronter face is going to warm that head up to 230 degrees. And we're going to choose set. And what we're going to do now is we're going to wait for that print head to come up to 230 degrees. And you can tell right down here in the lower left here, I don't know if I can highlight it or not, no. But there's a temp of 99 that's going up. You can also see the graph over here of the extruder. The target is up here. Here's what the extruder's at right now. So we're going to wait for that to come up to temperature. All right, we're at 190 degrees right now. So the next step is down here under length right here. Okay, you're going to put 100 in here. That means when we hit extrude up here, this button right here, it's going to extrude out 100. So we're going to wait till it gets a little hotter. So there's our little black mark. Now I'm going to push extrude on Pronter face. And as you can see, it's beginning to feed through. You can't see it, but the material is coming out of the nozzle. There's your black mark right there, hidden by this bar. Here it is right here. And it is done. We'll come back to Pronter face and we'll turn that nozzle off by going up here and setting the heat to off. So now that nozzle heat's turned off. Let's go back and take a look at our results here. Here is the end of the tube where we made our, started our, our mark for the 100 millimeters. And here, all the way back here, is where it stopped. So that's how far off it is. So now we have to use our ruler and we need to get our measurement from the end of that tube to the black mark. And we're gonna measure that in millimeters. It looks like that is off by six millimeters. So now I'll show you how we adjust the E-steps. Make sure you write down that six millimeter number. So to start the process of fine tuning your E-steps, e and as you probably saw, you know that was off by six millimeters. So you can see how important it is to fine tune that E-step to make sure you're putting out exactly the right amount of filament. So remember it was six millimeters we were off by. So down in the command box, we'll type our M503 again. So all the settings print out. You want to come to the top of those results. So we'll scroll up and you're looking for M92. That has to do with the E-steps. And as you can see right here, there's M92. And the number you want to look for down here is the M405. Okay, so 405 is what your E-steps currently are. So now we're going to do some math. So we want to pull up the calculator. So our offset was 6 millimeters. Okay, that's how short that black mark was of the tube. So what you want to do is you want to take 100 minus 6. And you probably could do this in your head. You come up with 94. Clear it out. What we're going to do is we're going to do 100 divided by 94. Okay, and that gives us that real long number right there. And what you do is you now times this, times that current E figure we had, E step figure we had, which is 405. And the result is 430.85. Okay, so our new E step is going to be 430. 0.85. Write that number down. So now we're going to come back to our little command right here, to the command box. So we're going to come down here and we're going to type in M92, which is the command to set the E-steps. And we're going to do E430.85. And we are going to hit enter. Now we just sent the command out to set the uh, E-steps to 430.85. Now you're going to issue a M503 
500. This is the important step. This tells the machine to save that. Okay, and it says setting stored. Okay, so we're going to do an M503 again. And there you go. As you can see, the E figure is now 430 dot or 0.85, which is our new E steps. So now what we'll do is we're going to do a feed test again to see how close that black line comes to the end of that tube. It should stop right where we want it to. Okay, we use Pontrophase to preheat the nozzle to uh, 200, 230 degrees. Uh, I've made our black mark right here. So now I will push extrude and we're going to extrude at 100 millimeters and we'll see where that takes us. The line is going through. Here's the line right here. Here's a close up and you can see that black mark is right at that tube exactly where we want it to be. The last step in tuning this is not really a tuning but it's part of the assembly is we have to do the auto leveling of the bed. Uh, you're going to need a, a wrench because this is kind of unusual. There's a pressure sensitive uh, switch in the nozzle right here and that's how it knows when it contacts the bed. And in order to start the calibration process you have to touch this to the bottom of the of the nozzle, at least according to the direction. So uh, we start the auto leveling sequence through the menu. Now it says that you come over here to the menu. Um, and this is pretty much how it is in the Viper. It's just this, you know, using this tool is a little bit different. So what you want to do is you want to go to prepare. You want to go to leveling. You want to go to auto leveling. And it says use tool to touch uh, the printer nozzle to calibrate the leveling sensor. We're going to touch right here and the screen did change it is now calibrating. Now this can take a while to do um, because in order for to get a good proper bed leveling uh, the printer has to come up to temperature the nozzle has to be a certain temperature in the bed and that's because all these components can uh, shrink and Shrink and enlarge depending on how hot they are. So what they do is they want to make sure that the bed and the nozzle are at the temperatures that you would most likely use it for so it gets a good auto leveling. Now this is going to go to 16 different places along this bed to auto level. So it's going to take a while. By looking at the screen here, you can see the auto leveling is done. So all that's left now is to start printing on this. And we're going to end on a cliffhanger right here because the next video is going to be doing a bunch of different prints on here. And we'll use some Maker's Cave green filament here. Um, basically just lime green filament. Uh, so yeah, so stay tuned. Next video. Lots of different prints. We're going to do some calibration uh, squares to make sure we're getting, you know, the right size stuff. Uh, and we're going to maybe print some, uh, obviously we're going to print some objects out too. So that concludes this portion of the three-part series of the Anycubic Cobra Max with fine-tuning it. Um, you saw how we could do the E-steps. Uh, like I said, you're, you're going to see how that, hopefully that's going to make some nice prints coming out of this machine. Because in part three, we're going to put this through its paces. We're going to do some test prints and see exactly how well it prints and whether it's worth the money or not. Um, this machine runs for about 600 bucks, I think, uh, which, you know, if it gives out good prints, is really a lot of bang for your money because, you know, like I said, 17 inches by 16 inches by, I think it's also 17 inches high. So I hope these tuning steps help you with your Anycubic uh, Cobra Max or your Viper. And like I said, maybe some of you, you don't have this particular brand with your Ender 3. Like I said, Pronterface will interface with all those as long as it's got a USB port. So if you found this video was helpful, be sure to hit the like button. Um, if you want to see more of what we're doing, especially that part three that's coming out where we're going to be doing some test prints, uh, be sure to hit subscribe and hit that bell if you want to be notified when those come out. So until next time, I'm Steve. Thanks for stopping by the Maker's Cave.